Good morning. We're going to work on block 11E, which is block E of row 11. It is an applique block. Let me do the spotlight here and I'll show you what it looks like. There we go. Now, that's the block. And it's applique and a little bit of pieced. But we want to make sure that you see how we line up these corners here and make them look like the true diamonds that they are. So this is this is an applique right. that starts from out here and comes in down here, back up and back out again. This piece here is also applique from this point up to the corner and then back out again. So we want to kind of give you an idea on how to line things up and um, kind of how to make this one look 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 pretty good. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to mom and she's going to kind of go through what she's done with this one. Okay, to start off with, you cut your foundation apart and this says unit five. So that means it's not the first one in the group. You put it aside. I clipped the border pieces here and okay, these see. little ones. Uh, okay, so this one we're doing here. And I'm not tablet's a little blurry so but what she's done is she's pinned these pieces here cut them and pinned them to them these pieces right here are the triangle pieces that go on each of the units in the middle but just the only way to pin them and keep them in one place so at this point this one we're going to put aside and we'll look at here in a little while okay okay now your units they're all they're four of them and they're all alike Two, three, and four. So they're all, yeah, you just turn them one way or the other mm -hmm. and, and make them fit in here. Okay. So when you cut your foundation apart, you'll have one that says unit one, one that says two, this is three, and this is four. So four, for every unit, there is a square piece of background fabric. And you glue it, and you, you don't have to turn it over. You just glue the, put the glue on the foundation and plop that fabric on. You just kind of line it up with these lines here. It's going to be trim. It ha doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be within these parameters. So that's that. Then this is the applique patterns. And you notice this one says 7B. It will go here. It's got a cutoff here. That's supposed to be that way. This is 8A, 8B. It goes here. It's got a green line that goes from here to here to here to here. And... It doesn't have the corner cut off. Okay, now let's go back to this for a minute. The corner cut off we're looking at is if you see this right here, this is the one out here that's got the big corner on it. This one has the cut There's and it has off. an additional piece mm -hmm. of, of background fabric in there. So this kind of gives you an orientation of how it's supposed to finish up. And for this one unit, you'll have this unit, the fabric that goes here, and two pieces of focus fabric, I'll call it. Okay, that is what goes with that piece. Now, every gonna, every one of those pieces has the same same parts to same it. Same parts to it. So when you cut them apart and you cut your fabric, you just pin them all together so that at least you've got them when mm -hmm. you get ready to use it. And you pick up one of the pieces, and you're going to do each one of them exactly the same way. Right. Okay. So we got, I'm going to go on to, to one that label three. It, it's basic, like I said, she said, it's the same all the way through. We just okay. did this in pieces so that we can speed along the process of, of the demonstration. Right. So I, I glued my fabric here. I stitched on the red line, which is the first line of, of applique for the placement. And then I cut apart the, um, the patterns, the found the applique patterns. And I advise you now on these to cut off the colored line, the red line. And I didn't do mine, and it made my block a little hard to work with. So I'm going to tell you ahead of time, cut off the color, not the black. You don't have to cut that off. And the colored line is only maybe a thread or two in width. But when you get ready to fold the applique, fold the fabric over and do the turned edge, that thread or two could put it out of whack. Yeah. And the next thing I do is I'm going to glue a little bit here and a little bit here. And I'm going to try to center this and I don't need to, if I hope, if I lay this down just right, I won't have to trim anything off 
along here when I along, did my trimming. Your quarter inch. This will be a quarter inch yeah. because of the way you lay it. Okay. It and, doesn't really matter. It's just however you want to lay it down. You've got plenty of fabric to do it either way. Right. And this is in the seam. This is going to be the seam allowance area. So I did that one there. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Now notice it's got the little point out here. Same thing. Now on the green one, which is what this one is. The green applique line? The green applique line. This is for the green applique. The one with the cutoff corner is for the red applique. I'm going to take the red applique. It's the first one you do, so you want to take it first. I do, I'm going to take it first. Red is first. And remember, we don't applique these lines because they were black. They We don't applique them. We All we're appliquing is these ones right here in the middle, mm -hmm. which is this one right there. This right here. This one. This It's this line mm -hmm. here and this line here. So you're not doing any applique out here on this piece with that little cutoff. Right. Only so, the middle. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm eyeballing it. And if you're a little bit leery doing the eyeball, mark it. It doesn't matter. Okay, now we've got a point here. So I have to clip this so it'll turn. And the breeze is trying to help me out a little bit. So I clip to the foundation, but not into it. The next thing is to dampen the edge. And you don't have to clip anymore because you're folding a straight line. Right. You're not folding on a curve. And this edge and this edge are the only ones that we're going to fold. Now you go out to the edge because that edge has got to fold also. And you can roll it back with your fingers. On the curved lines, I tell you to fold it over and pinch it. When you're doing a straight line, it moves a little faster and you can do a few things that you couldn't do on a curved line. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just folding it over. Be careful. And you're feeling with your fingers. It looks like you're pulling it, but you're not. No. You're actually using your fingers to feel that you're not. Feel folding, the edge. Feel the edge and you're not folding the foundation back. Okay. That one's ready. That A is ready. That's an easy one. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll get I'll get to, to the next one shortly. On this one, on this here, I have stitched on the red line. The next thing is get rid of what's going to be under the applique. So bring in your little scissors and cut this back. It doesn't have to be real pretty. Nobody's ever going to see it. Now another thing that I like to do to get this lined up right is do some marking. Just like a kid with a colored pencil. You need light. Walk. Okay. There we got it. Now, if we can see here, there's the placement line. This needs to be the stitching line. See so on the this. on the fabric, on the fabric, I'm going to use my red friction pen, and I'm going to draw on that line where the edge of that piece should be. And I'm going to make a mark here and a mark here because I don't need to sew any farther than that. Okay, so you mark the line itself, the black line, using it with a red pen, because we're on the red mm -hmm. applique. We got color coordinated, you know. Yeah, and the straight <laughs> line going out there just says, I don't need to go any farther than that. Correct. Okay. Now, you take this piece that you just prepared that says 5B, and this is 5B. Okay. And you line it up so that you can see the red line. That's the edge of your applique.
You got to be careful with these little pins because let me tell you, they stick hard and fast. Okay, now the applique. Okay, um, got it placed. Got it placed. And I'm going to take my little bottle of fray check here. And I'm going to put a drop when it comes down the tube I am. A little drop right there. Because that's a raw point. Yep, that's a raw point. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is press it with an iron and kind of set that press fray the, check. Okay. I dry the fray check with an iron. Okay. Now then, with my thread, we don't want any any uh, of the foundation to stick to be stuck. And I put glue on there. So we take this and run it around. And the line, the, the placement line is going to stop you. So now that's all loose. The only thing that's going to hold that, the only thing that's holding that place now is pins. So we're going to start here. I'm going to go behind the fabric. And you're burying your knot. Yep. Okay. In between. We don't. We don't have it sticking out on the side. Okay. Now, here again, my trusty tailor's ham. Okay. Because these are still small pieces. And I'm working on the end, so I'm at the edge of the ham. So it's, I've got something to. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. The ham's maybe 12 inches long, yes, six, eight inches yep. wide, and it stands about four or five inches off the If table. you don't have a ham, um, you might take a well-stuffed pillow or. I don't know. There's the end of an ironing board. The those little portable ironing boards. The end of that would be good. Okay. Now here again, the applique. The needle goes in almost parallel, and I just with the point. And you see, I can move it now. I know I'm not through the found through the foundation. First okay. stitch made. And if you pull it too tight, you're going to end up with puckers so that you want to make sure that you don't take too big a stitches or pull your stitches too tight. And so I've got that one. And it's not a fast process. I'll be the first to admit, not fast at all. Now, do you ever have trouble with your needle possibly pulling this fabric this way since it's not hooked anywhere? If I think I do, I just reset the pin. Okay. And I don't really see that happening. But if somebody would have an issue with yeah. that, just reset the pin. Just reset hold, the pin to hold the fabric out hold there. Hold the fabric out there. So you can't pull it and make puckers. And here again, don't stab like you, like ordinary standard applique, you go down and then you scoop. Don't do that with this. You run that needle in almost parallel. And when you push it through, you can tell if you've picked up foundation and you can you can stick the needle into that fabric and then I just twist the needle a little bit to get the edge of the applique. And I know this is like watching paint dry, but sometimes it helps if you watch the rip, rip, repetition of what's happening. If I feel like I have stabbed or picked up a layer of the foundation, I'll wiggle that needle a little bit up and down, and you can feel the foundation let go or the needle come off of the foundation. Now, when you get to the middle, where, the, okay, she's got a smile on her face. I think ahead. When I get to the middle, I'm going to make much smaller stitches. I'm going to do a little, almost like a whip stitch. So you see, that's it's pretty little. Pretty little. You're only catching a couple of like, couple of threads, and it doesn't hurt if you go back. See, I'm back away from the very edge. If your thread matches real well, and this does, because I can hardly see where I was, then we're getting ready to come down this side of it. And with the pin holding everything else, I can turn this one way or the other. You got a little more wiggle room, be and you're not going to worry about your 
getting it out of square or out of right it's held pretty well now i don't yeah. need this pen anymore and i really don't need that one anymore and i'm going to leave this one because i don't want the edge to come toward me okay so i'm just going to kind of reiterate some things that i'm observing um and i don't do applique i watch a lot but i have never done it um but in this where you put your fray check in the middle that's also going to hold those threads in place but you're also taking two little probably two maybe three depending on your your comfort level um bites of that corner that's going to help hold that in place and the bites go back into the back so Right. back into here not staying right at the edge there's no, there's no fold anything to to pull your stitch into so you've got to go back two mm -hmm. or three threads into your fabric you're not going to take a quarter inch stitch you're not going to take an eighth inch you're going to take two or three threads okay so you're almost to that little red mark that said well, you I don't missed, have to i missed my background oh <laughs> go back and pick up the background granny Pull the thread to pull it too I, far. I still didn't get it. It looks like you only got one. I got one thread, not quite enough That's to do not, it. No. I, oh, that looks better. Much yeah. better. There you go. Now you notice I'm to my to your point, your to red my point. Red point. Now you notice how you can swivel this around. That pin there helps hold a lot. So I'm going to take. You're just past the little red point. Yeah. And I'm going to take a, a stitch and then I'm going to do another small stitch. And I'm going to take the thread that's coming from the, not from the eye of the needle, but from the stitch. I'm going to wrap it twice around the needle, pull the needle through, and that's the knot. And then I'm going to take it through to the back side. Okay, that one's in place. Okay, now that that wall of the paint has dried, we'll go on to something different now. Yeah. Now, the next thing on here is the green line. Okay. The placement line. Okay. So we're starting. Remember the green? It's got four little segments. Okay. So we're going to stitch that. Maybe I should go forward. Okay, the next thing you want to move you move on to this one or keep going on that one. I'll keep going. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, let's go back to that one. This one is completed up to getting ready to sew the second um applique on. This was this was unit three. I'm gonna put it aside. It's the same as all the rest. I'm going back to unit two, which has had this prepared. Oh, and by the way, since we've done this, we're going to take this pattern out of here. Oh, Don't that's need right. it anymore. That's right. I remember to move that pattern. Remember to get rid of the pattern. Okay. That one this is unit. has been stitched. Yeah. The, yellow, the green hasn't, well, this one has already had the green stitch. Let's stay with this one. Okay. Okay, we're going to go back to number three. Same problem. We'll make up our minds yet. Yeah. But... We want to get rid of this and this not so much. Which it, one? You said this this way. We're not here because we don't we don't have to get rid of that because it's going out into the seam line. Okay, so you know just all you're after is really getting rid of what's extra getting rid of, of the what's background. Extra in the background. Because when you get to here, you're gonna turn and this is a little over, not gonna make that much difference. Okay. I could trim it back, but I think it, uh, yeah. You're In not the, trimming much of it off. I'm not trimming much of that one off. 
So it's it's kind of and you could have left it farther away from the edge, and I'd have had more to trim off. Okay, that one's ready. Let's run this aside. Go back to the green pan. We're going to color some more. All right, let me get this down here so we can see. Okay, I stitched there, but the applique needs to go here. There we go. You're putting the green line where the edge of the applique needs to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've turned the applique. Now, there's another thing to remember. On this particular block, and it doesn't prove that way on a lot of others, this point right here needs to meet this line. And it does on both ends. Because you've made it neat. If I had left the green line on the found on the applique pattern, it would not have matched. It would have come down here at that point because you had just two or three threads more fabric. But unbelievable the difference that it makes, but it does make a difference. Okay. So I'm going to put a pin in there. And I put a pin in here. Now I have to applique from out here. Here, here, here. And the green line that I drew is a guide. It's not chiseled in stone. It's just there for a guide for you. So you kind of got an idea where if you're way out of kilter, if you're not. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we can watch paint dry again. And she's going to applique from here, down here, to here, to here, to here. Now, how about if we don't watch paint dry? We're not going to watch paint dry this time. No, let's not watch I'm paint dry. I'm tired of paint dry. Okay. All right. Now. That's ready. Then at this point. Now that you've got this applique here, it's a square. But if you look at this, there's a little corner here. So therefore, if you turn the foundation over, you see there's a little piece of fabric here that has to be sewn. It's not applique. This is the piece that goes in here. Okay, so, now there's nothing else in the way. This has been applique. So I can I can cut this back without I can still applique here. That's pinned in place. It's not going anywhere. Let's go to this one. Oh, we gotta take the the found, have applique piece out. Oh yeah, take the applique. So pattern we out. got this one. I glued it on good. Yeah, you did. And I don't want to pull too hard. Okay, now we got the applique piece out of it, and this one. She took and put this corner on it here. Okay, you can go ahead and do that one. And this goes back to the just the standard general stable piecing directions on adding a piece. You lay your your little ruler, whatever you're using, on the line you're going to sew. Fold your fold it back. Measure. Put the add a quarter on it. <laughs> Maybe I should cut straight. Cut straight would help. <laughs> um. Once you get that done, then you add your new piece on. You've got two raw edges that are the right. They're straight. And I'm kind of eyeballing it. That's pretty much centered. Your pieces are always oversized. Because being foundation piece, that's exactly what you have to have is oversized pieces. So she didn't have to pin that because it's small enough. You can hold it with your hand and it's not going to wiggle. So she's sewing that down, sewing from one side to the other, backstitch at the beginning and the end of the line. Same as general standard directions for, gen for stable piecing. Okay. Took all the threads off. So she's going to turn. And she's using that folding... Uh, uh, some water on here. Yes, yeah, a starch pan. Uh, okay, the, the clover fo fabric folding pan works. This one is a is a starch pan with a a stiff tip. It's got a fiber tip, but but it's stiff. It's not a brush. Okay, and there's a little spring thing, and then you fill it from this end. And it came from. Oh, that's a lot. That's little writing. Yeah, Precision piecing products. Yeah, easy. Can... It's called Easy Press Pan Style for. Whatever, and the rest of it's in a language that I don't know. Okay, that's close enough. That's what we've got. So and I what she's done, before you press that, bring it over here for a minute. Okay, now this one, she's put 
the starch clear out to the edge. Here's where the seam line finished. That's where the seam line finished, right there. But she starched it out to here because you want this to be folded clear out to here and you don't want to fold a funny angle. So when you do this, you've got to fold clear out. So you put your starch clear out there so that whenever you fold this, you get your fold clear out to there because you've got to sew this and into the seam line. That line is straight, whether it's stone or whether it's right. stone when or it's not. stone or not, you want to make sure that that line is straight. Okay. Now, so now that we have that one kind of sorted, let's done. go to the one that Here's this one is ready to be trimmed. That one has the piece on it. It's okay. already been all applique. It is a complete. All your all your four units will look just like this when you get them done. Now we're ready to trim. So I'm going to trim this one. And you can do it with scissors. You can do it with rotary cutter. Depends on what your what your pleasure is of the moment. I just happened to pick this up. Now I'm going to trim one. I'm going to trim the sides that have numbers on them. Not these, but these. Because this one has a one. This one has a three. We're not going to, this is going to be the third seam sewn. But we're going to trim one. And this one will be ready. Okay, that block is ready to be sewn to its companion over here, which is block number two. Unit two, not this one. it'll be that one. There's the number one. So when I get the other piece applique on here and this piece sewn on, I could sew it on now, but why bother? By the way, I need to take this out. It has lived here long enough. Okay. That one will sew one to one. One to one here. And then when you turn it over, it'll be these two. Mm -hmm. And you see how they, you've got your diamonds, you've got these pieces here in the middle, and that's how it all comes together. The outer edges that we told you not to trim on these are what goes out here and you will trim those when you get ready to add these sides on. So that's why you don't trim them ahead of time. And after your block is completed and you have it in your quilt and you've taken the foundation out in readiness for quilting, you will only have one layer of fabric here, one layer here, one layer here. So your only thing you're gonna have is seam, seam allowances and there are maybe two or three thicknesses which is not all that much and that's normal yeah that's so normal. by following this you're going to get rid of all the extra bulk so that you can hand quilt it in whatever design you choose mm -hmm. okay easiest way i know of to go it looks tedious but you just take one unit at a time and work with it that way and pretty soon you're done yep and it's not a fast process folks i think i've <laughs> said this i've only worked on this since 2018 so it's been a while it, you can see by that thing, it's not a fast process, but it sure looks good when you can get it done and have points accurate and mm -hmm. look in the right way. Yeah. When you get all done, the amount of time you put into it is going to be very a mute point with the, the reward mm -hmm. that you get by having something that you're proud of. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're going to end this session right now and we're going to move on to another block and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.